Okay, so I brought her out to a different location, and as you can see, there's still no electronic collar use being put in here. We're still just working with the whistle and food and the long line, but I've brought her out here because there are far more likely to be the distractions of pheasants in amongst the ferns here. And uh, what I want to do is progress her onto the long line being dropped, so it's staged, right? So first of all, we start off relatively short distance with the long line. As I said earlier on, we're rapidly firing in that rate of reinforcement for those responses. As of yet, she hasn't failed in a response, not a single response. Now, I know that there's going to be a part where she does fail, and this may well be it because they're being the pheasants around, but certainly when there's visible distraction close at hand, I know the, the probability of failure is quite high. So it's prior to the failure that I'm going to start bringing in, introducing the electronic training collar to her and letting her understand that, because that is being brought in to prevent the failure rather than to correct it when it's happened. We're going to teach with the electronic collar. We're not going to punish for failure with the electronic collar. First couple are going to be with the line in hand. See the slight delay there? The slight delay on the responding to the whistle had to go on for a little bit longer. I haven't got any option. When we're talking about the electronic collar, it gives us that option. Other than that, I haven't got one. I can put pressure on the long line to bring her towards me, but that's all I can do. Or I can continue that whistle until the point that she turns, at which point it's cut off. You normally see a lot more engaged looking environment. You see this compared to last time. I'm not going to put a whistle in while she's engaged like that, but just prior to that is what I'm looking for. I want her to succeed. Here we go. Yay! Good. Good. And again, lying down now. Nice and early in that sequence with the whistle, okay? So the whistle's coming in as she's going out. Not once she's kicked into full turbo mode, you know, not once she's absolutely focused onto something. It's coming in earlier than that. I want to put that expectation into her that she may well hear that signal before she kicks into drive rather than waiting until that pivotal moment where she's gone into it and I'll lose. And I will lose if I allow her to do that. Live, you know, we're out in the real world world. You know, the, the line's trailing, she's at liberty to do what she wants to do. She's allowed to be a dog. Yay! I was asked a couple of times following the last few clips, are you really not using the electronic collar? Has she really not felt the electronic collar? On one of the clips I did this, I put my hand up and I put my hand up to signify when I was going to blow the whistle so that I wasn't given a verbal command because I didn't want to proceed the whistle with a verbal command. So that had nothing to do with the electronic collar. There's no one hiding in the wings pushing a button on my behalf to cause the dog to respond. And I find it interesting that people would think that there's a need for me or for anybody to jump straight to the electronic collar for a dog that, as we saw in the earlier clips, doesn't understand enough and it's not going to serve me any benefit or her to bring in a tool for a command that she doesn't understand. She's got to understand that command at least to a point of um, reliability that I'm comfortable with where like, I know that she's liable to fail under distraction but without that distraction she's liable to succeed. Then I can bring the remote collar in to be able to assist her in the latter part of that. Failure. Good girl! I would classify that as a failure. I know she came back, and I know that a lot of people will think, hey, why is that a failure? You blew the whistle, there was a bit of hesitation, and the dog came back. There can be no hesitation. That whistle has got to be absolute. Her life can depend on it, it will depend on it, and so will other people's dogs or animals or other people with motorists as far as this one's concerned, because running over to see dogs and crossing roads and getting hit by traffic is a big concern. So I cannot allow her to believe that it's okay, that it's permissible to ignore the response to that whistle for a few seconds after it. I can't allow that latency to develop. It's got to be instantaneous. Good girl. Good girl. Again, ears up. You'll see, if you look back on that in a minute, you'll see the ears came up, which showed me that she was switching into something. So I wanted to come on really early in that, uh, 
in that process. I didn't want her to actually engage in it. But again, you'll notice there was a slight delay on the actual response to the cessation of the whistle. Now, some people will be accepting of that. Don't be, don't be. If you want to get a reliable recall, then make sure that you have reliable requirements, that you insist on your own criteria and that you abide by them because that's fair on her. Mixing it up and giving her mixed messages is not fair. realize I've just had a couple of the first two failures if you like um, I'm gonna call them failures on, on the whistle recall there were hesitations I'll show you they're in here there were slight hesitations and one of them was a failure to respond I think it took a second uh, whistle for the dog to respond and the use of the line as well now the reason that I wanted to show that and to bring her here and to show you that is because there's more going on here right and life doesn't exist in a bubble, it doesn't exist in a training hall, on a training field, in a sterile environment, a tennis court, someone's back garden. When you go into life with a dog, life will dictate what's going to happen. Life controls the environment, you don't. The terribly sad thing is, is that this dog, <coughs> as young and enthusiastic and, you know, boundless energy and everything that she's got, couldn't be let off to enjoy something like this because she'd be gone. And the reason she'd be gone was just shown in the couple of uh, recalls that I did a moment ago with her, where, like now, where she's in there, look, and that's far more thrilling for her than the pocket full of chicken and cheese that I've got. At the end of the day, appetite isn't the motivating factor that's driving her here. Again, she's in there, she's nose down, she's enjoying her environment, she's hunting, you know, there's plenty of scent of pheasants, etc., in here, and that's just more important, more rewarding to her, more motivating. That's her reason for being. That's what she enjoys doing. It's what she loves. I can't make her love something more than what she loves simply because I want her to. So I need to be able to say, okay, if that's what you love, we're going to accept that, but we're going to have to harness it. And that's where the electronic training collar is going to come in because the electronic training collar is going to teach her what is required in these situations where until now she's had absolutely no reason, no experience to teach her to respond in the way that I want her to or that anybody else wants her to. She's simply done what she's always done. So what I need to do is teach her through her own behavior that she can control this environment, which I'm gonna manipulate, okay? I'm not gonna be a slave to environment, I'm gonna be master of it. I'm gonna manipulate her environment. She isn't gonna be aware of that, but everything that I ask of her is gonna be in her own best interests because ultimately, my goal is to give this dog the greatest possible life, the greatest possible freedom in a safe and controlled manner that I can do. I'm looking to see if I can catch you another one where she hesitates on the whistle. Even if my timing's bang on, even if it's just before she actually takes off, is there a hesitation in there? How important is food? How important is acquiring that reward in a situation like this? Yay! Latency again, hesitancy. Too slow. I'm rewarding anyway, because it's better than she's done before. See how many more blasts of the whistle I had to give. I had to keep that whistle going, keep that whistle going, because if I'd have just given the one, two, three, four, five that I generally give, she ignored it. Good girl. Good girl. Sorry to keep prattling on, but just to quickly say that a lot of people would see that and think, I've got no problem. I've got no problem. Why are you talking about electronic training collars? You've got no problem. The dog's turned and the dog's recalled to you, whatever it was, three times in a row there. Yeah, okay, one of them might have been a little bit slow, but on the, in the grand scale of things, there was nothing wrong with that. Listen, the one where she failed, where she hesitated, on there where the whistle went for too long, but up there where she hesitated and I had to take the line, I would have lost her in that situation. I would have lost her if there wasn't a line for me to be able to take. And you can think, well, in that case, forever leave a line on your dog then. What, everywhere? Everywhere I have a trailing line where my dog might see a bird, might see a cat, might see a vehicle, might see another dog, might see a ball being thrown, might see absolutely anything. But I have to keep a long trailing line on that dog rather than actually train them because I can't otherwise control them. I disagree. I disagree that that's fair. on that always end on a positive nice positive ending well done pop it
and let's move on to the next clip from there next time.